We do a huge amount of things in SciTech. Where I'm really going to show you today the things that we think are more relevant for you inside of quarrying uh, and the quarrying industry. But you know, we've got a stand just just over near the uh, the the uh, the bar over there. Come and ask us if you want to know anything on a little bit more detail. So we've seen this on a couple of other um, presentations, but it is. You know, it's revolutionising the connected site and it's providing connected services. Sorry, I need to move to the side. Providing connected uh, services via the Trimble connected community. And we're, we're doing two way data here, so we're passing it backwards and forwards. It's not just about the asset, it is com it's doing two way communication between the office, the asset, the operators. The, the surveyors, the on-site surveyors, the operational managers, and that's really what this is showing. We can do it in various ways. You can have wireless data. We do this via VRS, base stations. So VRS means you can get correct um, real-time corrections rather than needing a base station if you're looking at something that's a little bit more mobile. And then we have remote assistant, which means that we can a we're able to take over your controllers and look at problems and also that is something that's available for the on-site manager to do it's all about it's not just about the hardware as you can see across the bottom from a from a site tech point of view we're involved right from the beginning we do feasibility and mapping we do planning we do surveying we've got design we do data prep you can see that we're there across the whole of the function um, and as i say this is this is not just about the services and the workflow, it's not just the hardware, it's the whole, it's the whole process. At the end of the day, what we're trying to do is bring the whole thing together and it's a tool that does that for you. Um, and we're taking the field data and wirelessly sending it back to the office, to the operator, from the operator and the machine, back to the office. Any changes to the data models, we can then feed back through and immediately it's live and it's back on with the operator. So one of the areas that you've seen, we've got a banner for that just over outside there, is site positioning. Um, the industry is changing, we're trying to help change. The technology allows the, the customer to um, take GPS and get correct accuracy. And what we're showing here is how this could affect, this could benefit you in, in the quarrying industry. Surveying equipment, you can do stakeouts, you can do measure as built, establishing and checking control and GPS site calibrations, design verification, cut and fill determination. You can continually therefore get updates and progress checks and therefore can start to see how your volumes have moved, where you've got to, what you've done. And I think one of the things that we really see there's a huge benefit for is stockpile and excavation volumes, particularly on site. Um, how many of you still do manual stockpile, stock counting, stockpiles? Anybody? No, it's something that we hear a lot um, that, you know, people are still, the surveyor is still watch, walking out with somebody else on site and, and, and measuring that manually. What this can do is we can progress volume. So we're showing here on site the, the, the machine, the SPS 930, actually measuring the stockpile. Oh, sorry. And then we can show how, when that's come through, the stockpile and the volume and how it's done that. So, you know, a huge amount of safety, again, we're saving having surveyors and people climbing up on a stockpile and measuring it. Accuracy, stock losses. How many, again, see stock losses, stock gain, stock loss, stock gain, stock loss. So somebody's nodding his head there, I'm glad to see. Because we know that that's something, you know, and, and, and any of these systems can do that for you without the need to take two or three people off site to do that measuring we can do that immediately correct accuracy you can do that then as often as quickly and as many times as you like to feel comfortable that you know what your stockpiles are the other side of it is again revolution 
brutalising, but we're saying this is about machine control. And this is now where we take the machine and we're connecting that. So this is 3D control on excavators, dozers, we do it on compactors, skid steers, graders, and um, it gives uh, complex designs. We're now formulating that, so we can take a 2D model, we can make it into a 3D model, feed that into the system, feed it into the operator, control box inside, which I'll show you a couple of pictures of that next. Um, Hall road grades, measurements, so really tying into some, if anybody was in, um, the presentation that Mick did from the Finney Managed Services side of it, you know, again, this is another element of that, how we feed in bench levels, drainage, again, removing the need to stake out. So you're taking the need to have an operator or a, um, a surveyor on side, um, you, you're saving costs. You know, we see that particularly in construction, just the ability to not need to stake out and the batten in at the side, huge cost saving. And we're minimising the rework. So how do we do it? Well, we do this with uh, GCS 900, with the software that makes this happen. That's with a control box that sits in the cab. Um, the operator can see where they are in relation to the design, which you can see on the box here, and that they're working to. They can see if they're in, within the accuracy of the design that's put into the system. Again, this is how the control box here that you can see, this is need to stop moving from the microphone, sorry. <laughs> um, so this is the control box that sits in the cab. That's how he would see it. And this is, if you take it to elevation, you can see where he's moving to the design. And then you can see, again, in another format, obviously along the left-hand side is the cut and fill. And depending on the colour is whether you're in, in design, you need to, you know, change um, your your court or your grade or whatever it might be that you're doing but if you see that it's in green he's comfortable he's within design again anything that we then need to do to change that if we're feeling that you know there is a change to the design we can connect back to the office back in without the need for the surveyor the operator whoever it might be the office the site manager coming off site into the operator they can do that all from, from off-site. So if you look at some of the videos that we've got rolling on our um, screen over there, you'll see that you know one of the testimonials is a customer that's saying he used to move from site to site, manages 10 sites, and the majority of his day was travelling around from site to site. He can do all of that now within a day, just sat at his office, uploading new models if there's a variation to design. This is... Um, one is sorry another part that we use which is um, signals in the system avoidance areas so again warnings you might have geo fences that we could put in and if you're looking for that to to make sure that you're you're particularly in a quarry and one of the, again i'll show some other slides if you've got particular dump areas that people are not actually moving in and out of the wrong <coughs> and going into avoidance it could be safety reasons actually you could be that there's a an unsafe area there's all sorts of things for um warning system so what we get is if you drive if the driver moves into a, an avoidance zone then we get a, a flashing icon on the screen that you can see there highlighting in pink it's an alarm that he's gone into an area and it's a sound inside of the cab that tells him he's in a he's in a warning he's in an avoidance zone if the machine driver carries on the icon continues and becomes a large warning message depending on the area as i say the machine has entered you know that could be that it's just you're dumping where we don't actually want you to but it could be a genuine health and safety reason operator risk um, could be damage to the machine could be going somewhere where you know that could create a problem and um, can avoid lots of penalties particularly in the construction industry you know if you're driving into areas or you're doing something that you shouldn't be doing penalties can be incurred or safety reasons so again we're just trying to explain how not only are we improving productivity we're also looking at huge amount for safety The next thing that we think is very relevant to, um, to this industry is drilling and piling. 
DPS 900 is our product. Um, it's used on drill, drilling, pi, drilling rigs or piling machines. Uh, it's designed for any mixed fleet operation. So interestingly, when we heard um, Oliver from Barrett's talking about that Easter day and something that JCB were able to, to fit onto their machines, you know, the, this is exactly the same. Well, I'm not quite sure what they were talking about, but you know, we fit this on any product. So we are not alliant, we even do not have an alliance to any particular manufacturer. We can fit our product on any manufacturing equipment. Turnkey solution in the field, uh, office uh, workflows, applications are for rock and quarry, uh, open pit and mining. It's designed for ease of use, as I say, with, with any OA, uh, OEM. Again, there's a cab camera, uh, an avoidance zone displayed on the screen. We can see increased productivity, uh, reducing surveying work. Uh, drilling output is faster through navigation and, and drilling process. We can reduce over or under drilling through automatic depth, stop, improve bench quality. We could go on and on and on. We won't carry on. But you know, again, if you're looking for something in detail for this, um, we uh, can give you more detail on that. But we think it's something that um, is hugely uh, beneficial in the market, and it's actually not being taken up too too well at the moment. But you know, a massive benefit. Uh, aftermarket installation as well, and and again, over the air file transmission. So all in the connected work site once again. The next thing is vision link and um, something that we have on both sides from SciTech, from a Finning, from a Caterpillar. Um, it's website based, uh, enabled by the telematics hardware that's in the systems. It shows the location, health, utilization, uh, management and monitoring um, solutions. So you can see where your fleets are, where your assets are, site productivity. Uh, equipment health and utilisation, as I mentioned, you can see where they're moving, where they're idling, ties back into you know the whole managed solution. Um, mixed fleets again, we're not tied to any manufacturer, although we, we work well obviously with CAT, but we do have um, any manufacturer. Uh, you can be in different locations, it gives you all sorts of monitoring to determine whether you are we're looking at things for certain customers at the moment so are you in areas where you need to be avoiding you can only travel down roads at certain times due to public um, uh, restraints um, times areas roads anything like that again it can be mobile and we're trying to show that here you can have this on your mobile um, you can be looking at that where you're there on the fields android or apple so this is just trying to show um, an example for a quarry. The quarry is making bricks, one quarry, one dump, two stockpiles, and we're just showing here, and you can see the vehicle, one for red and one for yellow clay. Um, we have the truck, and we, we start the truck, it enters its load zone, the truck is now a candidate for a load event. And we're saying, we're showing the, the site, there's the load, there's the quarry face into the crusher, the haul road of three and a half kilometers. We now let the truck um, stop for more than three seconds. It can be picked up, sorry. This should have been moving. But what we're saying, this is transmitting to Vision Link again, mobile, can be on your site, can be on your site mobile. The quarry, uh, the truck is now, it's at the loader face, it's now being loaded. It's, sorry, it's gone back the wrong way now. So Vision Link now correlates who loaded the truck. The device sends that to the, to the Sorry, this hasn't worked quite as we'd hoped. But what we're showing is how the, the vehicle is moving. It goes along the haul road. It comes in into the cusher. We're picking up the information from the, from the 
the uh, machine, how many hours it's done, how many kilometres. It then comes back. We're transmitting. It's dumped its load. It's dropped its dump. It's dumped its load. We now have a complete load. The time of the load, the time of the dump, the area that it was placed, the position. Uh, we could track the material flow and the movement, the lifetime at each event and the low distance. Feeding all this back through uh, an SNM, which is a modem that we have inside of the vehicle. We're getting the position and the time. We should be seeing it move back, sorry. IT technology, it's not very good for us. Uh, and as the truck returns, um, you know, we have the same, the same rule applies. And we can see, again, we've now done a full cycle, full complete cycle. The time of the load and the dump again for the return and the next load. To total cycle time, total cycle distance. and we're able to see the efficiencies and we're measuring that all the time. All live, all live data. And then again, through Vision Link, as we mentioned, then we have the dashboards. So what we're showing is, uh, you know, here, dashboards that we're showing to the customer, sorry, I'm doing it again, um, that we can, we can let them see efficiencies, load times, dump times, are they in the areas, were they in the control zones, were they doing it in the time that we were expecting, and, um, what we get from this is we can improve the project, increase and decrease the number of trucks, again, um, in line with what was being talked about from the uh, finning side. You know, as a result of that, you can start to look at the, the optimization of the number of equipment that you need, who's performing, what, who's idling, which operators need training potentially, the number of trucks you need, any loading tools that might be required, any changes to the operation. So, to round that up, I um, hope that we've shown that we have a lot of productivity solutions, very relevant to the, the industry. Uh, we're resolving complex issues and resulting in huge improvements on safety, productivity, which means profitability which I think we saw as all of the things for the 2025 and, and the targets that are being put out there. We're around and we're just down at uh, a stand further down. If anybody's got any questions for us, that's where we are. Thank you.